All right, well, we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our presentation, Dr. Hedengren. We're really excited because we've been working hard with process controllers and researching hot air balloons and things. And so we really wanted to get a hot air balloon um, to adjust to a change in set point and altitude really quickly and really efficiently. And so that's kind of our objective with this project is developing a controller that will control the altitude of a hot air balloon. So we're going to go ahead and dive in. So just kind of an outline, we're going to talk about our apparatus and methods and kind of the equations we use. Um, then from those equations, we develop transfer functions for both. Um, we end up doing two PID, or PI controllers. Um, and from the transfer functions, we get some results from Simulink. And then we're going to talk about our conclusions and recommendations. So over here, we have our a diagram of what we're actually trying to control. So our control variable for this project is the height or the altitude of the air, the hot air balloon. And we've got two manipulated variables. The first is the burn rate, um, the rate that we're burning propane from the burner. And the second is that parachute valve at top. That's what enables it to be able to release hot air um, and descend at a relatively quick rate. Um, so those are the two variables that we're manipulating um, in order to achieve our control variable of altitude. And these are uh, couple disturbances that we have are wind and heat loss and um, we'll talk a little bit later about how we're able to model those. Um, we were able to use a force and an energy balance to be able to model how the hot air balloon is um, able to remain buoyant and how um, the dy dynamics of all of that. So we were able to use these force balances to come up, come up with data um, to be able to um, approximate our transfer functions. That's what things we'll talk a little bit about now. Mm -hmm. So you can see here on the graph on the left, we have measured and modeled data. And so the way we got that measured data is by using those force balances and energy balances to um, model how or to see how the balloon would respond to the step changes shown on the right on, in that green graph right there. Um, so we kind of saw how a hot air balloon would respond to step changes in burn rate and then used an integrator model that's shown in red on the left um, to model how the hot air balloon um, is flown. Um, and so we use an integrator model there and then for the descending of the balloon or how the balloon goes down in height we uh, also controlled it with a parachute valve which we kind of did research on to develop a transfer function based on experimental data and things like that. Um, and so that's kind of how we developed the transfer functions for both the burn rate and the um, parachute valve. Okay, so these are kind of our results. Um, in the end, we use Simulink, and you can see there's um, two uh, PI controllers, so it's right there and there. Um, one's for the burn rate and one's for the valve. Um, initially, we had only used a burn rate controller, and we had a problem with having the balloon um, descend. And so after looking up more research, we found that most balloons actually have valves that open up and then it is able to descend. So from our um, response, we were able to see that um, as we increase the burn rate, but it is bounded, we set a limit to how much we could burn at a certain rate, which was 0.01 kilograms per second. Um, and in the end, we wanted to tune it so there wasn't any overshoot, which ended up looking really great. Um, and it was able to descend, which we also wanted. Um, in our disturbances, we kind of modeled them with a the sine wave. It's kind of, we lumped them all together with um, just all the heat losses because we decided the wind was going to also descend the balloon. So in conclusion, we were able to um, very effectively uh, control our balloon, control um, the height or altitude of the balloon. As you can see on the right, what we did is we inputted a kind of a sine wave step point or set point to be able to see if our system could respond to it. And it responded really well with neg negligible overshoot. Um, we found it was best, as Sarah was talking about, to use both the burner burn control burn rate controller and the valve controller to be able to increase in altitude quickly and also decrease quickly. Um, further research would yield us being able to optimize um, the 
when each valve or when each uh, manipulated variable is on. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have them both on at the same time. Um, as you can see in these two bottom graphs, our, our burner and our valve are open at the same time at certain points, which is very effective at keeping a steady state height, um, but not very effective um, as far as efficiency goes. So that's where further research could be made. But overall, we were able to very effectively model um, a hot air balloon and uh, achieve our objective of controlling the altitude or height of the hot air balloon.